By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in today's episode, we are going to look at a classic battle between mono green aggro, you know, berserks, juggernauts, and that is taking on a white and black deck, classical dead guy ill. Two really nice deck lists. And uh, before I actually jump into the deck decks, I would just like to mention that this is played in an unlimited 40 match U40, which is kind of a new format. Uh, they've got a really nice community going on on Discord. Now, if you want to know all the ins and outs and the rule set of this format, please check the description below. So there I've put all the rules and also a link to the Unlimited 40 Discord. So if you think after watching this match, oh, I kind of like this format, check out the Discord link and uh, and there you can find how out how you can play matches and actually join their tournaments. I believe they have a monthly tournament now um, what you can also find there by the way are timestamps because i know some of you enjoy uh, skipping the deck deck or just skipping this whole introduction it's quite simple just open up the description below click uh, click on see more and then you can see the timestamps and one of those timestamps reads mtg games click on there and that will take you straight to the action as for here we are going to continue with the deck deck i'm going to start with the green deck and that's piloted by jacob let's have a look at his brew and here we see the Green Grizzlies by Jacob and any deck with Grizzly Bears is a cool deck in my book. And this is typical, your, you know, your green classical aggro style deck. We see four Giant Gross, we see three Berserks. Uh, also, I like those Copper Tablets in here just to deal some extra damage. It's kind of the, the direct damage of uh, in this deck, you could say, talking about that. We also see three Hurricanes, which is great, right? Which you sometimes miss if you're not playing with red and you play aggro is that final punch. So I always advise people to put a card in for that final punch. And I think Hurricane in, in green does a great job to deliver that final punch. Also, of course, the Copper Tablets can do that. I also really like, you know, Juggernaut, Giant Grove, Berserk, you know, then you deal 16 trample damage. Just, just, that's awesome. So I think when I'm looking at this deck, I'm thinking really, really short games. And now maybe you're wondering, why are there five gar cards there at the bottom? Well, that's because in this format, and I, I kind of like it because I think knowing Robert, who's kind of the inventor of this Unlimited 40 format, he probably put a lot of thought into this. Um, and I know he really looked at the recommendations by Stephen Menendian to decide like how to kind of take on this format. He also looked a lot at the Alpha 40 League rules. So there are a lot of similarities there. And, and one of his decisions was I'm going to allow a sideboard of five cards. They all have to be singleton, so you cannot have more than one copy, and only five. So this is a format with sideboarding, so that's kind of interesting. I don't see any uh, cards that can really damage black that much in the sideboard, so I don't think sideboard, the sideboard is going to play a big role into this. But then again, hey man, what do I know? Anyway, this is the deck of Jacob. Jacob, man, beautiful list of cards. Now let's take a look at the deck of your opponent, Dead Guy Ill. And here we see the deck of Robert now. Robert, man, what a beautiful deck photo. I love the fact that all your black cards, including the swamps, are black bordered. I love that stuff. And then all the white cards are exactly white bordered. So that's just a thing of beauty. I love the aesthetic. It's kind of a hard word for me to pronounce, but I love that. I'm very sensitive to that as well. Talking about that, I know that in Swedish, Dead Guy Ale is a deck that's usually used with the blue power splash. You know, I don't really like that as much because for me, Dead Guy Ale is really like your traditional black and white. Of course, I do understand the blue power splash because it simply makes the deck way more competitive. So I, I, I get it. But from an you know, aesthetic and a romantic point of view, I always like this more. Really your classical black and white, the two opposites coming together in that Dead Guy Ale Brew. Um, looking at the cards, by the way, I love the fact that you have an included uh, Dark Ritual. I guess this is a pretty quick format, so then you would say maybe Dark Ritual is a good card. But, you know, Dark Ritual can really set you up for a two for one, and this is a format where it's kind of difficult to draw in to new cards. So I, I understand your decision not to do uh, to add dark rituals. That being said, maybe it's going to be your downfall against uh, uh, this deck, against the green deck you're facing, because the green deck can be so quick. So I think early in the game, it's really up to Robert to kind of use his swords to plowshares wisely, trying to buy him enough time, and as the game will progress, I think so will also 
uh, uh, you know, his chances of winning will also gain, you know, so the longer the game takes. That being said, the green deck is very explosive, one well-timed berserk, and you could be like dead on the spot. Now, um, I really like that sideboard, one card in the sideboard, I should say it over, and that's pure lace. I think it's super cool. So it's one white to cast, it's an interrupt, and it can turn target permanent into a white permanent. So that is pretty cool. So what he can do, he's got a Black Knight, right? Black Knight has protection from white. So he can change whatever creature the opponent has into a white creature. And then he can attack with the Black Knight. The opponent cannot block because Black Knight has protection from white. That's one of the ways of how you can use Pure Lace. I think it's super cool. I'm definitely going to include it into Forgotten Combos. Um, another card actually that I haven't mentioned yet is Pestilence. Two Pestilence in this deck. I think if you manage to get Pestilence on the board, the game is probably yours. I think you're just gonna you're just gonna win the game. So that just being said, I'm not sure if you're gonna get a chance to put it on the board. I guess I mean I guess the green player is playing with tranquility. So he's also got extra tranquility in the sideboard. So that could kind of fix the pestilence problem. But pestilence really really strong card in this matchup in my humble opinion. Okay, we've looked at the deck of Robert. We earlier looked at the deck of Jacob. That means it's game time. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. We've got our mono green player, Green Grizzlies, is Jacob. He's sitting on the left. And then our dead guy ill player is Robert. He's sitting on the right. So a white and black deck. And it's Jacob here on the play, starting with a Scrib Sprites, a 1-1 one -one flyer. So that is a pretty good start if you're Jacob. You just want to put pressure on the board. Here is a black mana from, um, from Robert. So that's not too bad if you're Jacob. Nothing's really happening. You can deal some damage and probably play out some more creatures. There is exactly a grizzly bear coming onto the board. So that's pretty nice. And then turn two for Robert here. And I think if you're Robert, you really hope to find exactly another black source and a black knight. Yeah, here we see a black knight. Two, two first striker. So that's a perfect blocker for the grizzly bears. So that is a little bit annoying for Jacob here. If he attacks with the Grizzly, I wonder if he does. He's kind of indicating that he has a Giant Grove in hand. So attacking with both. There we see the block. Are we going to see a Giant Grove or perhaps a Berserk? No, we're not. Actually, Berserk doesn't work because it's only power. So the Giant Grove. But there's no Giant Grove. So this is really bad for Jacob. Losing one of his creatures and only dealing one damage. And worst of all, passing turn without playing anything new on the board. I mean, he is playing with Elvish Archer, so that would be a nice blocker for the Black Knight. But he's not playing it out, so I'm expecting an attack here by Robert. So first damage here for the green player, dropping to 18. Both players are on 18 for the moment. And we also see Robert passing turn, and it looks like he cannot find a white source. So only three black there. There's the attack, so he's going to drop to 17. And there is a Juggernaut. 5-3 powerhouse cannot be blocked by walls. So this is actually a problem for Robert here. If he can find a second Black Knight, he could block on two Black Knights and kill the Juggernaut. I wonder if he's got another one. We do see white mana in Robert's hand, by the way. So he's probably just keeping that on hand because they don't have a specific purpose. So that's a good play by Robert. There's a Soul Ring tapping four. Oh, a Pestilence. This is interesting. One of the things that Robert can do next turn is use his Pestilence for one. That means the Scrib Sprite dies and there's one damage for the Juggernaut. So he's got a toughness of three and then he can block it with Black Knight. Black Knight is first strike damage. So that would mean the Juggernaut dies and the Black Knight doesn't. Let's see if he's going to do that. Tapping the Swamp here, one damage to the Sprites, one damage to the Juggernaut. Now if he blocks the Juggernaut, I'm sure he's going to do that. He is. Does Jacob have a Giant Grove to save the Juggernaut? He does not. And now is the real realization that the Black Knight actually survives because of that first strike damage. So here we can really see a nice, uh, the nice synergy between Pestilence and Black Knight. There we see another Grizzly Bears. And things are looking bad for Jacob here. I mean, as I said in the deck deck, I think Pestilence is just a super strong card in this matchup. Because the green deck is so creature heavy. There we see another Swamp. Gonna tap five. Are we gonna see a vampire? Four, four, flying. Yes, Sengir vampire. Things are just getting worse for Jacob here. We're probably gonna see an attack as well with the Black Knight. Yeah, exactly. Attacking here with the Knight. More damage here for the green player. Jacob gonna drop to 15. So he's untapping. Now he needs to find 
something. Let's hope he's got, is there a giant growth in his hand? There we see a block. There is the giant growth. So that means the Sengir is going to die. Now he can use the Pestilence for one, I believe, to kill the Grizzly Bears. I mean, he can wait. Remember, damage stays on the creature for the entire turn. There we see a giant growth on the, uh, sorry, we see a regrowth on the giant growth. That's what I'm trying to say. And no activation of the Pestilence. Interesting. I think that was kind of a missed opportunity. But then again, maybe the U40 rules are slightly different that that doesn't work. There we see another Sengir Vampire. Sengir Vampire number two by Robert. And then attack here by the knight. I mean, things are looking really bad for Jacob. He's going to drop to 13. It's just really annoying. Like a 4-4 flyer is a problem for Jacob. Maybe if he can find another green and a hurricane, that could kind of solve the problem. It looks like he's first going to attack. Remember, he still has that giant growth in hand. He is doubting a little bit. Maybe he wants to protect his life total. He also has a Lanawer Elves in hand, so he could play out the Lanawer Elves afterwards. Although, with the Pestilence on board, it's probably not a good move. Anyway, he's attacking first. Let's see what Robert's going to do. Does he want to block knowing that Jacob has that Giant Grove? If he does, I would really, really activate the Pestilence. So there's the block. There's the Giant Grove. In response, we see double Pestilence. So that means that Black Knight dies... And of course, the Grizzly Bears dies as well. And then we see a Hurricane. This is very good magic by Jacob. Because the thing is, the Pestilence kills itself if there are no creatures on the board anymore. So this is a perfect solution. He's killing the Sengir Vampire and he's killing the Pestilence with one Hurricane. Great magic here from Jacob. And probably just going to be a pass. And then we're going to see the Pestilence blowing up itself. Exactly that's what's happening here at the end step of Jacob. And here we see Robert taking on his turn, untapping everything. Two cards in hand. And I believe two cards in hand for the green player, Jacob, as well. There we see another planes. I mean, this is kind of bad for Robert. You're not happy because he's already lost two of his Sengir vampires. And they're like his beef, you know, on his sandwich. So that's just really bad. And all of a sudden, it looks a little bit better for Jacob here. Now he can play the Lanawer Elves in hand because the Pestilence is gone. Right, and he can at least he can at least attack for one. I, I I cannot see the other two cards. Does he have? Oh, he's got a juggernaut. Okay, then I get it. Is there going to be a quick disenchant though? Yeah, quick disenchant here by Robert on the juggernaut, and a pass turn. And that's of course the thing when you play against white. You know you have to face a lot of these really good answers when uh, you know you've got swords, you've got disenchant. They're just some of the most powerful spells in the game. And here we see a Lanora Elves with a pass. There is a Chaos Orb and a pass. I'm not expecting him to flip on the, um, on the Lanora. And of course, he can always flip if he wants to after like a Giant Grove and a Berserk and stuff. Are we going to see a Giant Grove here on the Lanora Elves? No, we're going to see a Soul Ring and a pass. So the game is kind of a little bit in a standstill here. Both players just having one card in hand or, or the, no, two cards for the green player. Now card number three. So I guess the green player has a little advantage. But of course, you know, we do see uh, Robert with that uh, Chaos Orb on board. So it's a question for Jacob what to put on board knowing that Chaos Orb is out there. And remember, this is an uh, alpha, beta, unlimited format only. So corset format only. So the green player doesn't have access to Crumble, for example. One of the best ways, of course, to deal with artifacts in the color green. There we see another Black Knight, by the way, by Robert. If he's going to attack, he is kind of showing that he's got probably another Giant Grove in hand. He's going to take the damage here. Interesting, because he could have decided to block. And then as soon as Jacob wanted to put a Giant Grove on there, he could have said, you know what, I'm going to flip on, on your elf. Oh, I love this. Look at that. Howl from beyond. Howl. I think he's going to win with this one. He is. What a glorious way to win this game, number one. Howl from Beyond. What a beautiful, beautiful card. Love to see it here. Robert, well, well played. Now, both players are going to go to their sideboards. And they're going to, um, yeah, to do some sideboarding. Remember, their sideboard is only five cards. And they're all different. You cannot have the same 
card in your sideboard. Anyway, they're going to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And Jacob, of course, on the play after losing that first one to that beautiful Howl from Beyond play. This is a good opening by Jacob with a Lanora Elf, so some early ramping. I wonder if he can now kind of ramp out a bigger creature. If he can find, for example, a Soul Ring, then a Juggernaut. I guess not. He's just attacking here with the Lanora. Okay, there we see a Soul Ring. Interesting. Into Copper Tablet. Missed his land drop, but did get that Soul Ring. And I think Copper Tablet is really good. I mean, it's kind of guaranteed damage, right? So you take a damage during your upkeep. So here we see Robert taking the first damage, going down to 18, passing turn here. And then we see Jacob going down to 19 because of that Copper Tablet. So let's see if Jacob can find a land. Tapping four. Are we going to see a Juggernaut here? There's a Juggernaut. Now, are we going to see a Disenchant? If Robert doesn't have a Disenchant, I think it's going to be a really tough game for him. Or or a Swords, I guess. But he needs to get rid of that Juggernaut. That's I guess that's the power of Juggernaut. Okay, it's gone. I wanted to say that's the power of Juggernaut. If you don't have an answer, you've got a serious problem because of that five power. Of course, we do see some life gain here for Jacob which is kind of nice also when you're playing against a deck with a Pestilence and just a past turn by Robert isn't finding his Hypnotic Spectres, isn't finding his Black Knights. And this is kind of perfect for Jacob because he can deal an extra damage with the uh, Lanora Elves. Also found another Forest, so there's an attack for one. We see Robert dropping to 16, he's gonna drop to 15 later on. Oh, look at that Juggernaut finding the board. Is there an answer here by Robert? Let's see, tapping four, there is his own Juggernaut. That's an answer to the Juggernaut now. I wonder, I mean, if Jacob has, for example, a Berserk in hand, that would be kind of great. So he's taking a damage first from his own Copper Tablet, going down to 22. I wonder what he's going to do here. What I kind of like about this core set, um, uh, these core set uh, rule sets, that's what I'm trying to say, is that Juggernaut is really big in these there we see a giant growth probably okay on the juggernaut that's blocking the giant oh and a berserk so that's 16 trample damage minus three is 13 damage he's gonna go to one because he's taking a damage from the lanawer whoa and he's gonna die to copper tablet oh wow what a journey by jacob this is such an explosive matchup gonna go to zero here and that means it is a 1-1, one, one, and we're going to game number three. I'm already looking forward to that. Man, these games have really cool endings. Game number three, here we go, a 1-1. One, one. It does mean that Robert, for the first time in this match, can start the game. So maybe that has an influence. I mean, his deck is a little bit slower than the green one. It looks like he's taking a mulligan. So he's starting with six. I think what's really important for him is that he can find a Black Knight kind of early because it's such a good blocker against all those two toughness creatures. And you could really see that in game one when he had that Black Knight in turn two. So no turn one play for Jacob. That's kind of a slow start. There we see the Black Knight for Robert. So this is really great for Robert. He's kind of ahead while the green player actually should be ahead. I wonder what he's got. Okay, there's a Grizzly Bear. It's just not that great in this matchup. Although, of course, Jacob's got uh, those giant groves in his deck. And there's the attack. Probably just going to take two, going to drop to 18. And will there be a follow-up? Like an Hypnotic Spectre right now would be absolutely fantastic. It looks like there's not a follow-up. So, I mean, Robert hasn't found a single Hypnotic Spectre yet. There's the attack for two, so he's also going to drop to 18 here. Now the question is, does Jacob want to do anything like Giant Grove Berserk? He could just deal 10 damage out of nowhere. No, he is playing a Chaos Orb though. So I guess he's going to flip with the Chaos Orb Confetti. Yeah, okay, no, okay, there was just a Confetti. Okay, anyway, there's the Chaos Orb and a pass turn. And there we see a Swamp. And there's the attack by the 2-2. So he's going to drop to 16. Tapping two more, no. I mean, maybe Robert wants to keep his disenchant mana open. Remember, in response to a Chaos Orb activation, you can use your disenchant. And this is exactly probably why Jacob is using the Chaos Orb now. So he's going to flip. Oh, it's in the cover. Now I get it. He wants to... Keep his Chaos Orb crisp or something. Anyway, now he's going to flip. 
on the Black Knight. Yeah, it is a hit. Well done here, Jacob. So that's a hit on the Black Knight. So the Black Knight is a goner. And after that, the Demonic Tutor resolves. I mean, this is not too bad for Robert. Ooh, interesting. He's going to go for a Soul Ring. Ooh, I wonder what he has. Maybe he's got Sengirs in hand and he wants to make sure that he can play those out. I was kind of expecting him to maybe go for Hypnotic Spectre. Also because you're playing against green, right? Green really has a tough time of dealing with creatures. Like actually Berserk is one of his best ways to kill a flyer. Oh, he's got Hurricanes, of course, in the deck. No, no, no. Forget what I said. Forget what I said. It's, uh, you know, with Hurricanes, he's playing three Hurricanes, I believe, Jacob. So yeah, then your flyers are very vulnerable to that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's focus back on the game. So he's probably just going to attack with the Grizzly first, right? Or maybe play a land and then attack with the Grizzly. So there we see forest number four. And is he going to attack here? So he is going to attack for two. So Robert is going to drop to 16. What do we see next? Okay, he's going to get back his Chaos Orb here. And he's going to... Not play it out. Okay, I can kind of understand why you're not playing it out directly. Okay, he is. Okay, I thought maybe he doesn't want to do it because then if Robert has a disenchant now, he's like tapped out and he can use his disenchant. Would actually be nice to see the beautiful Chaos Orb Jacob, not the Chaos Orb Confetti. Yeah, that's better. It's always kind of difficult, right? If you've got a really good conditioned Chaos Orb, are you going to flip with it? I mean, I, I would... But I understand that it's, I mean, the cards are so valuable nowadays. Anyway, um, let's see what Robert's going to do. My Chaos Orb is in really bad condition, by the way. So it's easy for me to say. So he's going through his hand. I do believe I see a Jam Day Tome in there. So that could be a reason why he went for the Soul Ring. Because then you can cash in that mana for extra cards. So I'm kind of expecting him then to cast the Gem Day Tome here. But oh, of course he's worried because of the Chaos Orb. It's a different scenario. So he's playing out the Sengir to bait out the Chaos Orb activation on the side of Jacob. And I think if you're Jacob, I mean, you really want to get rid of the Chaos Orb, right? Oh, we got more proxy. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. There we see an activation. No, no, we don't. Okay, I thought, oh, a hurricane. That's way better than using your Chaos Orb. Hurricane for four. So that means four damage to the Sengir, and both players are going to drop to 12. This is a perfect scenario for, for Jacob here. Things are really looking up for him. And he's now also going to attack with the Bears. He's going to put Robert on 10. Wow, I mean, that hurricane was a perfect answer to that Sengir Vampire. I was kind of expecting him to flip, but this is a way better scenario. Now he's taking care of the Sengir. He still has the orb and he's dealt four damage. That's perfect. It's kind of showing you also how strong Hurricane can be. And Hurricane is really good in this matchup because Robert has Sengir Vampires and Hypnotic Spectres. Tapping four. Are we now going to see the book? Okay, there's the book. And then I wonder if he's going to flip on this. I guess he is, right? You want to flip on the book. You don't want him to draw extra cards. First, of course, you can attack with the Grizzly. Put him on 8. I mean, if he's got a Giant Growth here, he can, like, half his life. Giant Growth Berserk means game. So he's going to put him on 8. And he's going to pass. Interesting. I would have expected him to flip. Like, Gem Dayton can really take a game. On the other hand, maybe his decision is, I'm just going to focus on trying to make sure that my bear can keep doing damage because he's so low. So that could be a strategy as well. There we see a Juggernaut. So that means he's probably going to flip on the Juggernaut. Yes, he's going to flip. He just wants to make sure that his Grizzly Bear can keep attacking and he can keep the pressure on. So we're going to see another flip. Going to put it in slow-mo this time. And there we go for the slow-mo flip of Mr. Confetti. And it is a hit right on the Grizzly Bear. So that means the Juggernaut is a goner. I do understand the strategy because now he can keep attacking with the Bear. I guess if you're Jacob, you're a bit worried about like the double white because it could indicate that he's got a swords in hand. 
Uh, is, does he have a giant growth? Is he going to take the risk here? So there we see, no, there we see a lot of elf instead. So just two damage here for Robert. It's going to drop to six and an extra body here. And I mean, you know, if you're Robert, this is a problem. You need a blocker or at least a swords. You need to get rid of some of these creatures. And he's going to pay four for a card. Okay. And what else can he do? They're paying two. Is there a Black Knight? Okay, Black Knight's pretty good in this scenario. And also he's got one white untapped. So if he has a Swords in hand, that would be kind of ideal now for him. Because, you know, let's say Jacob attacks as a Giant Growth, and in response he can Swords. So there's the attack by two. That's kind of what you expect, right? So there's a block on the Grizzly Bears, probably. There's going to be the Giant Growth. Are we going to see a Swords? Oh, he's got the swords. So this is a really good scenario. Or are we going to see more giant groves? Double giant grove. There we've got seven damage. He's done. Oh, wow. What a good timing by Jacob. Really having that discipline to wait for the right moment in the game, right? I think Robert also did really well. He probably had that swords for a while, but was waiting for the right moment. And what about Jacob really disciplining himself, not putting on all those giant growths, not putting all his eggs into one basket, but waiting for the right moment. And I have to say, what a fun format this has been to look at. Thank you, Jacob and Robert, for sharing your match here on Timmy Talks. It's really been a lot of fun watching this. And uh, yeah, it looks like a great format. So again, um, if you want to become a part of this format, simply check the description below and there you will find a link to the um, to the uh, Discord channel of Unlimited 40. So it's just, you know, it's free to join and you can contact Robert there and uh, ask if you can join the monthly tournament. Okay, so this was the episode for today. And if you like this video, please consider liking, subscribing and leaving a comment and also share it on your socials. That would really, really help. And then there's one last thing that you can do to support the channel and that is becoming a patron of the channel via Patreon. There's probably an info card popping up right now. Click on that info card that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And um, yeah, you can already support the channel starting with $1 and then you really kind of help me out to keep doing what I love doing and that is making magic videos like this for all you guys. So please consider becoming a patron. Like I said, click on the info card to check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Talking about Patreons, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, wunderbar, amazing channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!